Just because you're on Linux doesn't mean you have to give up on playing with mods. I'm Oscar, the super user, and today we'll be learning how to apply mods to games on Linux. This should cover mods that we download from websites, not the ones from Steam Workshop, which work just like on Windows. First, we'll learn some theory with how Proton and Wine prefixes work, and then we'll see two real cases of installing mods. The Dawnless Days, which is a fantastic Lord of the Rings mod for Total War Attila, and Darth Mod for Napoleon Total War. I chose these two because they present different scenarios and installation methods. What you learn here should be applicable to other games and mods, but quick disclaimer, since every mod has different installation methods, what we are going to see here today might not work for everything, but it's good that you know these basics to apply as a general rule of thumb. Finally, if you want to skip theory and get your hands dirty, use the timestamp chapters to skip ahead. With that said, let's dive into what are Proton and Wine prefixes. So when you decide to run a Windows application on your Linux system, you are going to be using something called Wine. Wine is actually an acronym, which means Wine is not an emulator. And that's because it really isn't emulating Windows. It is recreating a fake Windows installation, sort of. So when you run a .exe file, Wine will set up a folder on your computer called a prefix. And inside that prefix, it has the typical layout of a Windows installation with program files, my documents, app data, etc. It also installs libraries and other important Windows files so that the program believes it's running on Windows. Steam has a special version of Wine called Proton, developed mainly by Valve, which is focused on games. So whenever you run a Windows-only game on Steam, a Proton prefix is created in your Steam installation folder. If you right-click on any installed game in your Steam library and go to Browse Local Files, it will take you to the installation directory of the game. This, however, is not the prefix. It is good to keep in mind that the game installation directory and the Proton prefix are entirely separate. So if you need to explore files in the game's installation folder, you can browse local files to get there. But if you need to access the wider Windows prefix, such as to access my documents or the typical app data folder, you need to head two levels back and you will see the compact data folder. If you head in there, you'll see some folders with numbers. These numbers correspond to the unique identifier of products on Steam. You can check this number if you head to the Steam store and check the URL, and you can see in the case for Napoleon Total War, that is 34030. I do have a folder with that name, so I know that is Napoleon's Proton prefix. As you can see, I now have the whole Windows directory layout at my disposal, and I can access my simulated Windows user called Steam user and access my documents or app data. All of this is important to know because you might need to copy mod files into any of these directories. If for whatever reason you don't have a compact data folder for your game, it might be because that game is not using Proton because it has a native Linux version. By default, Steam uses the Linux version of a game if it's available. I generally avoid the Linux build and stick to using Proton. It's not that I dislike the Linux versions, but they are normally out of date compared to the Windows Proton counterpart. And for mod instructions, it's easier if you use Proton because it will mirror the Windows layout. If you want to change this, just right click the game, head into Properties, Compatibility, and check the force the use of a specific Steam Play compatibility tool and select Proton Experimental. As you can see, Hearts of Iron 4 provides a native Linux build indicated by the Steam Linux runtime. Another reason why you might not have a compact data folder is maybe because you haven't run the game yet. So make sure that after installing your game, you're using a Proton layer and also booted the game at least once so it can set up all its folders in the prefix. There is more to prefixes, of course, but these are the basics that most people need to know, especially when it comes to modding. As a quick review and summary, it is important to remember that the game installation directory is different from the Proton prefix. Now, let's explore one type of mod, which is the easiest to get up and running. Drag and drop mods. 
These are mods that are just a matter of copy-pasting or dragging in new files into a directory, sometimes overwriting existing files. They can ask you to drop the files into the game installation directory or into a secondary directory within your My Documents folder, such as in App Data or My Games. Some mods describe this method as manual installation as well. So with the Dawnless Days for Total War Attila, all we have to do is download the mod, extract the zipped folder, and we get this series of files. If we read the installation instructions over at Nexus Mods, they tell us to drop the .pack files inside of Program Files, x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Total War Attila, Data. This, of course, is the Windows path. This also means we just have to access the installation directory of the game. If you remember from the theory, the installation directory of the game is separate from the Proton prefix. So all we have to do is right click on Total War Attila on Steam, browse the local files and voila, we're there. We have the data folder here, so we drag and drop the indicated files there and we're done. If we had to access the app data folder or my documents, that is when you would need to access the corresponding compact data folder for the game. Before we go on to the next method, if you think my videos are helpful and informative, please consider giving me a like and subscribe for more casual and friendly Linux tutorials. Mods with installers. These are a bit trickier because we need to run a .exe file to install the mod. You really can't double click on the exe file because what your computer is going to do if you have wine installed is create a separate prefix for that installer and it won't be able to see your game. You need to be able to run that .exe file in the same Proton prefix of your game. So how do we do this? Well, with a very useful tool called Steam Tinker Lodge. You can find ways to install it over at their GitHub page but I'm going with Proton Plus, a compatibility tool manager. You can find Proton Plus on Flathub, but you can also use Proton Up QT if you wish. In Proton Plus, we can install compatibility tools for Steam and other launchers such as Heroic or Lutris. You switch which launcher to operate on in the top left corner. We're sticking to Steam today. If you scroll all the way down, you can see the option to install Steam Tinker Launch it will probably tell you that you are missing some dependencies. So depending on your distribution, you'll have to install them before proceeding. I have left the name of the packages in the description box for Ubuntu, Fedora and Arch-based systems, and that should cover the majority. I am currently on NixOS, so I just add them to my configuration file. Once the dependencies are installed, you can click on Install again and now should be successfully incorporated into Steam. Now, you need to completely close Steam and open it again so it can refresh and see the new compatibility layers. This is the same if you had installed uh, Proton GE, for example. So now we select the game you want to have the mod installed to, right click and access properties. In compatibility, force a specific one and choose Steam Tinker Launch. Now, when you launch the game, you'll be first greeted with this setup window. It is set to launch the game normally after a few seconds, so you have to be quick and click on main menu. I wasn't quick enough and the game launches. If that happens, just close the game and launch it again. This is quite a complex tool with many options to tinker with the game's Proton prefix. You can even use it to install the Vortex Mod Manager in its Windows version inside the same prefix, which is pretty cool. You could explore and discover other many little tweaks and options, but we're going to focus on the option to launch an additional .exe file inside the prefix, which is what we want. We just need to click on Game Menu and then check the Use Custom Command box. In the Custom Command field, we will click here and select the .exe file we want to run, in this case, the Darth Mod Installer. We also want to make sure to select the option to use only the custom command, which will only launch this executable and not run the game, since we don't want to open the game yet. Remember to untick the Use the Linux Runtime option, because the Darth Mod installer is not a native Linux package. Once set, we click on Save and Play, and we let the exe run. And now we can see the Darth Mod installer, 
as typical in Windows. We can complete the setup and it will be successfully installed in the same prefix as Napoleon Total War. Just be aware of the default install path that the mod gives us. It directs to the Napoleon Total War installation directory in Steam. If we click next, it will tell us that this directory doesn't exist, which is true. Remember that I told you that on Linux using Proton, the game installation directory is different to the prefix. So we need to change where the mod gets installed and tell it where our Napoleon Total War files are. And as you remember, it is the same as right clicking the game in your Steam library, clicking on browse local files, and there's the installation directory that we have to choose. So with the installation done, we can close everything. Now, in the case of Darth Mod, it uses a custom launcher. So to start the mod, we need to launch it through this special launcher. Otherwise, the vanilla game will run. On Windows, you would probably get a desktop shortcut to the launcher and you would be able to double click on it and run it. With the Proton prefix, we want to now use Steam Tinker Launch to change what executable to run whenever we run Napoleon Total War. So we launch the game again to get the STL window. And now this time we change the launch options to this custom launcher provided by the mod. I navigate to the Napoleon Total War installation directory and try to find the new executable of the launcher installed by Darth Mod. There it is, the launcher.exe is dmw.exe. I'll set it to that. Sometimes mods add a desktop shortcut to launch the mod, which can work most of the time too. Just remember that it would be in the desktop folder of the Proton prefix. It's not really your Linux desktop. We click on save and play, and there you go, the custom launcher appears and we can configure and start the mod. Since Darth Mod overwrites files in the vanilla game, once configured what we want, we can then remove Steam Tinker Launch and go back to using the Proton version you want and the modded version of Napoleon would launch. Okay, so we've seen the most common ways to install mods on Linux. Again, not every mod could work depending on how it was developed, but I have had a lot of success with the mods I've tried. Hopefully that has been helpful for you. You can leave what you think down below in the comments, always being polite and respectful. And remember, with great power comes great responsibility.